Hello, I'm Matt Willis Bagpiper, and on this channel I make videos to make you a stronger and more confident bagpiper. If you like this kind of content, please think about subscribing, liking the video, and making uh, some comments below about uh, your thoughts on what we're doing. So, today, we're going to be putting cords on a set of pipes. Now, this is not... Uh, this is not rocket surgery. It's not the hardest thing in the universe, but you do want to make sure that uh, they're well spaced and they'll make it a lot more comfortable to play the pipes and they'll make them look a lot better when they're up and on your shoulder. Now, I'm sure there's a number of ways to do it. I'm just going to share with you how I go about doing it. We're going to need um, a pair of uh, scissors. My favorite scissors are actually these little tiny ones on a uh, Leatherman type tool. Uh, I think they work great and they're real easy to kind of get in and cut these zip ties. Now, you're welcome to stitch with hemp and other stuff. That's a big pain. I just use these little zip ties. I also use pretty thin zip ties. I find when I use bigger zip ties, wider zip ties, they don't kind of crimp into the cords nearly as much and ha have a tendency to slip a little bit more. So I actually like a smaller zip tie. There's not a lot of force being put on any of these parts. So obviously you need your cords and your pipes and a ruler can help too. All right, so the first thing I do is I like to measure where I'm starting from the outside tenor. I have these very carefully laid out. Um, I'll often like put a cork in the top of the middle tenor or something like that to make sure it doesn't get mixed up. I really wanna make sure that all of these drones stay you know, together with their bottom sections. I've talked previously about how I go about making the middle of the, uh, the bottom uh, different. I use a different color hemp on the bottom where you can't see it, but let's get on to the point. Okay, so I put the bottom of the uh, tassel at the bottom of the mount, and then I go up and find where the cord holder is, and then I put the zip tie right there. So first I put it on somewhat loosely so I can move it and adjust it if needed. Okay, boom, that looks perfect. I go ahead and get that nice and firm. And for now, I'm gonna go ahead and just cut off the extra. I like using this particular measurement as opposed to a number of inches because it's gonna be very proportional to your instrument. If your cord holders are a little higher or a little lower, it's gonna make everything just seem, I don't know, a little bit more symmetrical and a little prettier. So now I'm gonna go ahead and put it in. And one of the things we wanna do now is as we're putting it on, let's see if we can show this on the camera. We want to try to keep it all centered. We don't want like this part right there to be like over here and like it's pinched, like the cords are like this or some sort of, you see that? We don't want that. We want them right across from each other. So I'm gonna take another zip tie, put it on. I'm gonna put it on somewhat loosely so I can adjust as I need. I'm gonna hold this in place. And notice I have a towel down on the table that'll keep things from clanking around quite so much. Things don't want to roll around quite so badly. This is the same towel I keep inside my case all the time. It's just an auto drying towel. Okay, so I can see right here that these are pretty nicely aligned. I'll tighten it a little bit more. And so you can see they're pretty evenly spaced. I gotta take a little, that side and that side are pretty evenly spaced. And yet it's spinning quite freely in here. You want to be able to tune these readily. Don't put the, on here so tight that you can't spin the cords around on it. All right, so we're now done with the outside tenor. Moving on. Okay. Now, I try not to get any twists, if possible, in my cords. So we're gonna put it over. And what I'm looking for, and I'll put a picture on the screen here, when the pipes are hanging you know, kind of uh, from the bass drone, if you will. I want there to be like a seven inch space between the drones. You know, right at, you know, you can go six and a half, you can go seven and a half. I wouldn't go smaller than six and I wouldn't go over seven and a half. And also understand that these cords are going to stretch. They're gonna stretch. I don't know any cord that doesn't stretch to some degree. So maybe like six and three quarters would be a good place to start, knowing that it'll stretch to seven. It'll eventually keep stretching. If you see old cords, um, on a set of pipes, you can see that they're often quite thin. They just kind of keep stretching over time. No big deal. So I'm just putting loose zip ties on either side. I am still able to readily move and adjust the fit of all of this. And now they're laying on the table, they're not moving, and I'm going in with my ruler, and I'm seeing from drone center to drone center that I'm at about, 
Well, see, that's a little too close. That's like five and three quarters. So we're gonna move those out a little bit more and try this again. Some people have actually built like little rigs to hold their parts and get exact the fit they want. Okay, do, 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 do. Just a little bit further. And we don't want it too far. We definitely don't want it too close either. Okay, I'm putting just a bit of tension on it. And now I see on my ruler, yeah, now I'm coming in at about six and three quarters inches. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten that one. Go in, make sure that they're spaced nicely. I can see that they are. Again, you want them to be on the opposite sides of each other. You don't want like these angles. You want them. And if you do this right, you shouldn't have to do this for an awfully long time. Every 18 months, two years, unless they stretch really, really quickly. Okay, so. Moving on to the base. Now the base is always a little weird. Um, there might be reasons for this. But I always found it a little odd that uh, the middle section of the base doesn't actually have a cord holder for most makes. I know um, uh, McClellan makes a set that has those there. His uh, Heritage, I believe, edition. Um, there might be some other makes, but obviously most do not. And it is what it is. So again, I'm gonna put one on loosely enough that I can readily move it around as I adjust the fit. And then on the other side. Now this one tends to be able to be a little bit looser because you want it to be able to kind of move up and down on um, the joint itself. Plus, if you have a projecting mount, it's not nearly as likely to come off as on these over here. So. Okay, we're gonna move this one out just a little bit more. See, that's looking really good. If we look at that spacing, we can see it on the camera. You see they're very nicely spaced in there. Again, right at about six and three quarters and go ahead, tighten that down. Make sure that that's nice and... And this one right here on the outside of the middle base. This is actually the most important of all of them. This is the one to really make sure you have nice and snug because the weight of all of these is ultimately gonna be pulling on that one right there. You can wait to cut all these at the end. I tend, I, I don't know, I do whatever I'm feeling in the moment. Right now I'm feeling like cutting them. Okay, so we're moving on to the, the base top. I'm gonna go ahead and assemble it. Get these down here. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is Make sure if there's any knots in it, you take the knots out. And here we go. We're gonna go, so have the top wherever you like to have it. I tend to have just a little bit of hemp showing. It's black on this, so it's a little hard to see. But I'm gonna put it at the very bottom, just kind of like I did with that outside tenor. I'm gonna put it on the bottom of the base and I'm gonna follow it all the way up to the cord holder. And that's where I'm going to put my zip tie for the top joint. And that's gonna give me a nice amount right here to kind of tie into a nice little overhand knot when we're all done. If you have older wool cords, you might find that you don't actually have this much material. I was just recently dealing with wool cords and there wasn't this much left over. You're gonna have to do in the moment whatever works because obviously this needs to be able to go all the way up here and up and around. So, so the one I put on is for the outside. So now I'm gonna follow from the joint that we did on the middle section, make sure there's no kinks in this, get those twists out right there, and then a couple more twists, there we go. I'm gonna put it on over the top and that one zip tie should be on nice and firm. I'm gonna pull it tight along the other one. And now fasten another zip tie. And wanting to make sure it's nice and aligned. There we go. Looking good, we're gonna go ahead and cut these. Boom. And boom. 
Okay, so we're almost done. Now we just have the tail that we created here. So we have the tail and we have this extra bit of a cord right there. So I like to, for the knot, I kind of take it, lay it out, find kind of where the knot wants to rest in the midway point. See, so I just made a triangle and that's gonna help me now just take this and just tie a little overhand knot with it right there. It doesn't need to be anything fancy. And when you're done, you should have, I don't know, six inches of, of tassel left from the bottom here. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab the pipes and put these on the pipes so you can see how this looks all put together. All right, so there you go. It's a nice handsome stand of pipes right there. You can see the spacing looks really good. Everything is right where it needs to be. It looks nice and clean and uh, nothing's too long, too dangly, too weird. So there real quick is just how I put uh, cords on a set of drones. So I hope you found this useful. If you did, please like the video, consider subscribing to the channel. And uh, yeah, thanks again for watching. Share this with anyone you might think is interesting and uh, comment below. I'm Matt Willis, Bagpiper Guys, and until next time, cheers.